Kare Shalom and welcome to our watercolor journey. We're demonstrating this beautiful sunset scene today. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette, we have cobalt blue, indigo, imidazolone lemon yellow, transparent orange, quinacridone red, and imidazolone yellow. Heinrich used Sennelier masking fluid and a heron masking brush to mask out the round sun and then he drew lines with the masking fluid to resemble some of the grass stalks. He masked the sun out because the yellow is rather staining and he wanted to have a whiter sun. He wanted to get an even wash over the sun so the yellow would have covered the white area and it would be quite difficult to lift it out. Also, it is much easier to get a nice round sun if you mask it out from the beginning. It's not necessary to apply a lot of fluid. A single thin coat should suffice because it should just form a slight barrier between the paint and the paper. He wanted to preserve those white stalks to create light and depth in the painting. In this way, you don't need to use gouache or some other white medium to create the light in the stalks later. Let the masking fluid dry naturally. A hair dryer might make the masking fluid soft and tacky, so just be patient and let it dry. It shouldn't take more than five to 10 minutes. Now make sure the fluid is dry by touching it lightly with your finger. It shouldn't adhere to your finger and it shouldn't feel too sticky. Now that the fluid is dry, he used a large Artmate Hockey number no. three brush to wet the entire paper thoroughly. First up is the awesome Raphael Petit Gris Pure number no. 12 round squirrel brush and imidazolone yellow. Now you can see why he masked out the sun. He covers the area around the sun with a layer of yellow and then he comes in with the transparent orange. He used a bit too much orange on the and so it kind of diffused the brilliance of the sun a little bit, but we will see later how he managed to let the sun shine again. Okay, then he added cobalt blue and continued adding the other colors on the palette to complete the first layer of the background. By layering the indigo and the cobalt around the sun area, the yellow-orange of the sun starts to pop a bit more. Don't be afraid to add your colors. Just try to use a light touch so that you don't muddy the paints. Take special care where the blue and the yellow meet so you don't create a green sky. The colors look really vibrant and very much in your face, but remember that watercolor becomes rather dull when it dries. When you are satisfied with your first layer, let it dry naturally. You still have masking fluid on the paper, so don't use a hair dryer. A good alternative to speed things up is to place your paper in front of an ordinary fan, about maybe one meter away from the fan. However, make very sure that your paint has settled a bit first. A fan or a hairdryer can blow your paint all over the place if it is still too wet. So just let it settle for a few minutes. Now that the first layer is dried, he used the hockey to wet the entire paper again to add the next layer. He starts with the yellow first as it is the lightest color and then he will add the colors from the palette again like he did in the first layer.
To create the darker clouds, he used indigo. He's working wet in wet, so the paint was a little bit more pigmented, stronger, so that it could spread gently into the sky. If the indigo is too wet, it will just create blooms. So to create some distance, the clouds at the bottom of the sky should look further away. Therefore, they are a bit lighter and smaller. The clouds higher up on the picture plane are darker and a bit bigger, so they look more to the front. Let the painting dry again. You can use a tissue to carefully lift paint off the sun area if you have residue paint on top of the masking fluid. Sometimes this paint does not dry properly and when you remove the masking fluid, you might smudge the paint into your picture. So lift it off very gently. Once you are sure the paint is dry, you can use a rubber cement eraser, some cling wrap, your finger, or any other eraser to gently remove the masking fluid. Be careful not to rub too hard. You might damage the paper and then when you paint it kind of looks weird because the um, the paper stands up. It makes, it piles. That's the word. It piles. So don't rub too hard. You can see that the masking fluid has created a rather hard edge around the sun. So to soften this, he used the Winsor & Newton rigger to add a bit of yellow and then orange to the edge of the sun. This also helps to bring more prominence to the sun area. Let it dry again. Now it's time for the next layer. Heinrich used the Raphael to wet the area around the sun and then added some Emmedazzaloni lemon yellow around the sun and then he blended the yellow with water into the foreground to diffuse the stark white stalks a little bit. Now you can use any yellow, you don't have to use different yellows. Emidazzaloni is beautiful, but you can use any other lemon yellow if you have it. That does not really matter. Again, let the painting dry. Now it is time to add some detail to the foreground. He mixed some indigo into the transparent orange to create a lovely soft brown. Then he used the rigger to draw in the rest of the stalks. He stipples a few dots at the end of some of the stalks to resemble the grass seeds.
To create variation in the grasses, you can play around with your mixtures. More indigo will give a darker, cooler brown, and more orange will give a warmer, redder brown. This variation in color would help you to create depth and dimension because the cooler colors will recede and the warmer colors will come more to the front. Here you use the rigger and the dry brush technique, so the side of the brush, to bring a bit of darker color into the foreground and to make the foreground a little bit denser. Again, he varied between the warmer and the cooler brows. He used the Raphael to gently add a bit of water to soften the grass in the front and he added a bit of color to the foreground. When you are done, you can let it dry again. Now, you can keep adding more layers, but sometimes it's best to know when to stop. You would run the risk of losing the freshness of your painting if you add too many layers. The colors would look more vibrant, but you will develop an almost acrylic look to your painting. So the intent is to maintain the unique transparency of watercolor. So don't overdo it. Right, this time Heinrich used a white jelly roller from Sakura to sign his painting. And we're done. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you soon. Vaya con Dios.